Hey guys, this is Austin John 22 coming to you today with another review. And today we are taking a break from reduxes of old Beast Wars characters and focusing on something from the movie line once again. Today we are taking a look at movie Voyager class Galvatron, who has some problems but also has some very good points. So let's go ahead and get this review started properly by getting him transformed through the magic of jump cuts. And here we have Galvatron in his vehicle mode, and I did stick his little gun up on top just because usually that bothers me, but the nature of this guy's transformation, I kind of figure it isn't too far-fetched to have it sitting there. But removing it, we can see he has this very cool uh, little flat nose cab over truck thing. I don't know the make or the model or anything like that, but it is quite nice looking. Uh, great color, though, to be fair, I believe it was a bit darker in the actual movie. Still great color, great kind of metallic wash through it. Great uh, Hasbro silver. I, I only wish that little things like these hubcaps and the lights on the front were picked out better in paint. But overall it is uh, far more impressive in terms of paint than I would have expected. It's a very nice looking vehicle mode, rolls very nicely, and uh, scales pretty nicely with some deluxe class figures that are certainly not obvious plugs for future reviews, except that they are. And um, the, the, there are good and bad things about the design of this figure, which we will get into momentarily, um, but I do want to reiterate. There are good and bad things. There, this isn't a negative review. First of all, due to the nature of his transformation, he does have quite a gap back here, and his uh, trailer hitch is quite a bit further back than I think it probably should be. But his transformation is pretty simple, and you may think that's a bad thing considering this is a mainstream Voyager, but I also think his transformation is quite clever. So let's get into it right now before I continue. First we're going to take these panels on the sides and we're just going to fold them back and that loosens up the uh, legs. They are also supposed to tab together here via some friction ports between these two pieces, but they simply don't. It's mostly these panels that hold this aft section in place in vehicle mode and it works fairly well. Next we're going to come over here, and we're just going to kind of fold these forward like so. And then we are going to come up top, fold these out. Next we're going to come up here and just kind of fold this whole thing back and just kind of leave it like, leave it there like so. Giving us clearance to fold these big bits around, revealing his arms as you can see. Which we can go ahead and straighten out. This also gives us room to fold up his head, which will click into place. Now coming back to the back here, we are going to accordion this up, like so. And next we are going to take this section and just kind of bring it down, loosening this whole thing up and letting us accordion this whole back section in, like so which allows us to fold these down which actually I should probably have mentioned we have to fold this front panel forward first then we bring everything forward and fold these down and then fold this up and it, it, bring, it makes this nice flat little backpack the transformation of which I think is really clever but also not difficult and it all holds together quite nicely now we simply lower his legs and we fold out his feet. And it's really that simple and what we get here is just what is despite the oddness of his transformation and of his design and the sheer massive difference in aesthetics between his vehicle and robot modes, a fairly movie accurate looking Galvatron. Of course, we can take his weapon, 
and you can either have him hold it like a typical gun or you can do what I know everyone is going to do because it's Galvatron and he's supposed to have an arm cannon you can make it into an arm cannon and while I love the molded detail on this weapon I hate that none of it is painted if you when you look at the torso of the robot for example you have all of these really cool tubes and wires and joints and gears and mechanisms that are picked out in these really cool colors down in his legs you have all these really nice panels and pistons that are picked out in some nice colors even his head has some paint on it though not as much as it should but his weapon which is clearly designed to look as if it is growing organically from his arm does not have any of the wires picked out at all it of course also has a missile gimmick but considering that the missile flies about two inches I'm not even going to bother showing it to you and have already put the missile away somewhere where I won't lose it because you all know how easily that tends to happen uh, there are a few customization options with this guy uh, like I mentioned you can you can uh, place his gun in his hand however you like you can also raise or lower these shoulder panels which are separate pieces for I have no idea what reason and uh, overall he's a nice looking figure in terms of articulation he has some really nice ratcheting joints in his legs and in his arms and in his elbows and a ball jointed head and yeah, that's that's really about it. It's it's standard articulation. It's about as good as we typically get with a Voyager class figure. So what did I mean when I said there are good points and bad points to this guy's transformation? Well, first of all, he's very clearly a shell former. And while he's not as bad as some of the shell formers we've gotten in the past, a shell former is still a shell former, and it's still something that I think Hasbro should shy away from. However, his transformation is also very simplistic for a Voyager while still being quite interesting. The way that the backpack folds up, I find intriguing. If Hasbro and Takara want to continue to make simplified figures that appeal to children, this is how they should do it and just keep the lines all as one line. I cannot express how disappointed I have been with the simpler, more kid-oriented, mainstream Transformers figures that have come out of the movie line. Some of them, like the Spin Attack Strafe that I showed off in one of my reviews previously, are okay. But the rest of them just feel cheap and lazy. And I can't imagine that any kid who gets those as a gift or a, on a trip to the store with their parents or whatever is going to grow up and look back on those toys fondly as an older child or even an adult the way that I do as a collector now on my childhood toys. Because back when I was a child, childhood toys, all toys were the same. They all came from the same main lines. If you bought a Transformer, it was a Transformer. It wasn't Transformer ages 5 to 7 or Transformer ages... 8 to 12, it was a Transformer. I remember playing with Transformers Robots in Disguise Transformers that were complicated and difficult to transform and I had so much fun with them. And even though I don't have many of them now due to unforeseen circumstances, I look back on them fondly as a collector and they did contribute to my love for Transformers today, and I just don't see these simplified children's Transformers doing that for the modern generation of children. Now, Rescue Bots are an entirely different thing, and we will get to those eventually, because I do have a few. I'm speaking specifically of the simplified Transformers that have been released with the movie line so far. If you've been to any retail store, I'm sure you know exactly what I'm talking about. So, Haztec, here is a model right here of exactly how to do more simplified transformations correctly. If that's really the direction you want to go in, go with something like this. And that's why I don't mind this guy's 
simplified shell form or transformation sequence at all whatsoever at the end of the day. For more size comparisons, here we have him next to a grossly undersized Dinobot. And the one that I'm sure all of you care the most about. Here he is with Voyager class Optimus Prime from the new movie. And as this Optimus Prime is about standard size for Voyager Optimus Primes, Galvatron will fit fairly well in scale with pretty much all of them. Overall, Galvatron is not a great figure, but he's not a bad figure either. He's a good figure. And while I don't wholeheartedly recommend him, I definitely recommend that you take a look at him and probably pick him up. And it's a short one today, but that's really it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, and leave a comment down below if you feel so inclined. In the description down below, you will find links to a bunch of the other things that I'm working on, including my gaming channel, which has finally started to get some decent content, and my collections video. It's a bit outdated at this point, but it, it still has most of my collection in it. So if you see anything in it that you would like me to review, let me know and I'll see what I can do. This has been Awesome John 22 and I will talk to you guys later.